Hello and welcome back. In this video, we'll discuss problem and change. We'll start by discussing the problem application. Problem records can have related incidents, they can contain problem tasks, and problem records can also communicate workarounds, which will automatically send updates to all incidents a part of a problem. To the right is a screenshot of the problem application inside a ServiceNow and below is a screenshot of a problem record. We'll also discuss the change application. Out of the box, there are three types of changes which correlate to three separate workflows. There is a routine change, emergency change, and a comprehensive change. The change application allows for different types of change schedules and also has a calculated risk function, which will calculate the risk of a change based on a set of criteria. The screenshot to the left is the change application menu and the screenshot to the right is a change workflow. Now let's take a look at problem and change in ServiceNow. We'll start with problem. The problem application has a create new module, a number of list view modules with different filters like problems assigned to me, known error problems, and open problems. There is also an overview dashboard in the problem application, which shows graphs and list of problems. Let's go into an existing problem record. Here we can see a number of fields, such as number, configuration item, priority, a related change request, a known error checkbox, and a knowledge checkbox. We have description fields, an opened, opened by, state, assignment group, and work notes list field. At the bottom of the form, we have two related lists, incidents and problem tasks. We'll add an existing incident to this problem record by clicking the edit button. We can also create problem tasks for this problem record. Let's create two problem tasks and assign them to ITIL Susan. These will be assigned to Susan's workload and may be helpful as a reference when troubleshooting the problem. There are, there are also a few links under the Related Links section. There is a Communicate Workaround, which will send the workaround to all callers and the related incidents. A Post Knowledge and Post News option, which will create knowledge articles as well. These can serve as helpful automated services when problems do arise. Now let's take a look at the change application. Just like the other applications, the change application has a create new module and a number of list view modules with different filters, such as open changes, close changes, and all changes. There is also an overview change page with graphs and lists. In addition to the list views, there are modules to show the current change schedule configure change properties, create new schedules, 
and define conflict properties. Now let's navigate into an existing change request. Here we see a number of common fields. In addition to the common fields, we have a risk field and approval field, which shows the status of the approval, the type of change, and some fields relating to the conflict function. We also have a number of change fields in the planning, schedule, conflicts, notes, and closure information form sections. Under the related links, we have a calculate change function. This will take a number of fields into account and calculate a risk and impact for us on the criteria we've provided. This can be very helpful when we have a process in place to streamline our risks. We can also take a look at the change workflow. We can see the workflow is currently waiting on the plan task to be completed. There are also related lists for affected CIs, impacted services, approvers, change tasks, problems, incidents pending change, and incidents caused by change. If we navigate to the change tasks related list, we see four tasks for this change. If we mark the planning task complete, this will automatically change the build task state to open. If we go back into the workflow, we see the green header on the build activity. This represents the workflow's current activity. The blue headers represent activities the workflow has already ran, or the path it's taken. We'll go back to the change tasks and mark them all close complete. Now if we navigate back into the workflow, we see that this change workflow is complete. Now let's take a look at the change schedule. This is a type of calendar view which shows the different changes that are currently scheduled. This can be nice in order to visualize the changes ahead and determine if there are any conflicts with the scheduled changes. We can also change the date range in the top right corner. Now we'll take a look at the risk conditions. This is where the values calculated by the risk functions are defined. Here we can provide complex scripts to calculate the risk for us, so users aren't left with guessing the risk. We can also define blackout schedules for holidays or windows where no changes may occur. There are also maintenance schedules where we can define when certain changes may be scheduled. Finally, there are a number of change properties and conflict properties 